हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ग्रेड अप टुडे वी आर हेयर फॉर द जनरल एप्टीट्यूड लाइफ क्लास टू एंड दिस क्लास विल बी ऑन न्यूमेरिकल कंपटीशन वन ओके सो एज द गेट एग्जाम इज वेरी नियर सो वी हैव प्लान सम जनरल एप्टीट्यूड सेशंस फॉर यू एंड वी हैव बेसिकली अराउंड फाइव सिक्स क्लासेस फाइव क्लासेस फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू the yesterday class the english class was taken by odisha ma'am and we had a very good response for that class so the english session is now over and now we will be taking some more classes for the numerical parts okay the numerical parts the two classes will be on numerical computation the third will be on data interpretation di and the fourth one the fifth class of the series the last class will be on verbal reasoning so good of good evening to all the viewers okay i can find some people have joined us yes udayanan lakshmi yalla pooja bhat vinit kumar i and good evening to all of you okay so the <clears throat> concept behind conducting these classes was that uh, as we were busy with the technical subjects till now and as the courses and all the sessions which we had conducted till now for the technical sessions that are towards their end so now we have planned some sessions for the general aptitude classes okay and <clears throat> the english class done yesterday so good evening to all the viewers who have joined us now yes swayam ji prakhar goyal kirup shri arun aron sai kumar rahul nanda good evening to everyone good evening to all each and everyone there will be <clears throat> around 20 questions in each of the sessions what we have discussed and what we have given here okay so good evening to all the viewers once again and without wasting any of your time i will be taking i will be giving you questions okay you will be given <clears throat> just a minute for each and every question to look upon to think to see the concept and solve and then i will discuss some of the concepts that are related to those questions and i will also solve those questions okay so without wasting any time let us begin with the question number 1 see this it says trucks 10 meter long and cars 5 meter long go on a single lane go on a single lane bridge okay single lane means they go one after the another okay and there must be a gap of at least 20 meter after each truck and a gap of at least 15 meter after each car now trucks and car travel at a speed of 36 km per hour if cars and trucks go alternatively means one is the car like this if there is a car then there is a gap then there is a truck and then there is again a gap if they are going in this direction suppose okay so they go alternatively then what is the maximum number of vehicles that can use the bridge in one hour we have to find out the number of vehicles means the number of vehicles i must tell you just focus on that <clears throat> there we are asking the number of vehicles okay the total number of vehicles including the car and the truck okay so once again welcome to all the viewers raj kumar khinchi has kaise ho sir i am fine i am very much fine good evening and uh, <clears throat> hope you all are uh, also very fine and doing your preparation preparation for the gate exam the gate examination is very near now okay hardly 10 days left for the mechanical and the cs branch and 15 days left for the other branches of civil and ec and electrical okay so see this question try to solve it just one minute i am giving you then i will solve this question for you okay so just give me some answers let some people come with some answers some have come with the answer utkal has said 14 40 durlo jyoti have also given 14 40 vivek is saying 720 good evening kanaiya kumar you are welcome to this session so let us see what is the answer to this problem first of all you should understand that what is asked shivam roy is saying he is feeling nervous for the gate exam you don't have to be nervous shivam there is nothing about to be nervous you have to you if you have prepared well throughout the year or for the how much time you have been preparing the 6 months 8 months whatever time you have been preparing you don't have to be nervous have faith upon yourself okay believe in your preparation and the exam will go good for each one of you okay so let me say that this says that a car has a length the car has a length of 5 meter 
the truck has a length of 10 meter okay after the car there is a gap of 15 meters and after the truck there is a gap of 20 meters so if we take if we take whole of this lot as one lot then what is the total distance 15 plus 10 15 plus 5 plus 10 plus 20 this total lots come out to be of a 50 meter okay and what is the common speed the common speed of car and the truck that means that they travel with the same speed of 36 km per hour so 36 into 5 by 18 will give you how much will give you of basically you don't have to do this okay sorry do not do, do do not do this because it is asking one hour only so no need to convert it in one hour they travel 36 kilometer they can travel 36 kilometer because their speed is 36 kilometer per hour so this comes out to be 36,000 meters okay so <clears throat> the one lot can travel means that it occupies a space of 50 meter the total distance they can cover is 36,000 meters so 36,000 meter divided by 50 will give you the answer. Okay, what will be that answer? That answer will give you 720. But this is not the answer. Why? Because in this whole lot, there is one car and there is one truck. And it is asked the number of vehicles. So you have to multiply this value by 2 and get the answer as 1440. So the correct answer for this question is 1440 all of them who are giving me the answer as 720 please please look into that your answer is not 720 your answer is double of that just 1440 <clears throat> if anyone is having the problem in this question please ask because most of the answers i am getting is 720 but 720 is not the right answer please gulzar sharif jagdish pandey you all are giving me the answer as 720 but no, Khushbu, no. I don't know where you are getting it wrong. It is very simple. 36,000 meter is the distance they can travel in one hour. The lot, the distance or the space occupied by the lot is 50 meter. That, but that lot contains one truck and one car. And it is asking the total number of vehicles. Okay. The total number of vehicles. So that will be 720 into 2. That will be 1440. Okay. Gulzar, we are doubling it because we are considering this 50 meter length of this lot, which considers or which has, which consists of one car and the gap after the car, the truck and after the, the gap after the truck. Because after this, this again, this lot will continue that here will come will car, then gap, then truck, then gap. Okay. So we are considering this lo lot as one. Okay. So this lot is one. So that's why this lot occupies a space of 50 meter total distance they can cover in one in one hour is 36,000 meter or 36 kilometer so just dividing this by give you 720 but that is the whole lot consisting of a car and a truck but it is asking the number of vehicles which consists of both that is the car and the truck so just multiply it by 2 and get the answer as 1440 okay Those who all, all who have joined us late, <clears throat> it's not that that I will repeat each and every question again for you. What you can do, you can just go with the flow of the class and after this whole session is completed, you can go back to the YouTube and you can watch this video again any number of times. Okay. If we had three vehicles, should we have tripled it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now let us. Big, let us see the next question. This was the question from the speed time distance. Now let us see what the next question is. See this. This is the question that uses the concept of a train passing a platform and passing a man standing on a platform. Okay. So see this question. Sir, single lane means both left and right side vehicles have vehicles. We are not considering about that. Akshay, do not go into that much complications. Okay. So see from the front, the train of a train from the front, <coughs> the train enters a platform. It takes 25 seconds for the back of the train to leave the platform while traveling at a constant speed of 54 km per hour. And at the same speed, it takes 14 seconds to pass a man running at 9 km per hour in the same direction as the train. 
Then what is the length of the train and that of the platform in meter respectively? This is the question that has been asked in this year only that is the 2018 from mechanical engineering. Okay. So find out the answer for this. Some of the answers I am getting there's option B. Let us see. Okay. First of all, you should understand what the question is saying. If this is a platform, see if this is a platform I am considering. Okay. If this is the platform, if the train enters from its front side from this way. Okay. And it will leave at this point. If this is suppose the length of the train, then the train, the front enters this point and leaves at this point. Okay. So then we can say that the train has completely passed the platform. First thing is this, the total time which is given 25 seconds is from this instance as when the train enters the platform and when this back of the train has left the platform. Okay. So this is the total distance what we are talking about at this point of time the speed that is of the train is 54 kilometer per hour so that 54 you need to convert it into meter per second okay so 54 into 5 by 18 will give you 15 meter per second okay simple now you know a simple formula that is time is equal to distance upon speed so the total distance that is that is the distance that the length of the platform plus the length of the train divided by the speed has been given to you as 25 and the time which takes it takes during this duration to cover the train that it is 25 so from here you get one equation that p plus t is equal to 375 meters okay this is one concept now when the person or when the train when the person is running along with the train at some different speed of 9 km per hour when the train is running at 54 km per hour at that time the train takes 14 seconds to pass that man okay that means see this if this is the man that is running on this platform okay this is the man that is running in this platform the train is also passing through this so what will happen first of all we have to find out the relative speed in this case you will use the concept of relative speed in this case you know when the two objects are running in the same direction with different speeds the relative speed is the difference okay so in this case the relative speed will become 54 minus 9 because the train speed is 54 the man speed is 9 so that will be 54 minus 9 that is 45 kilometer per hour okay you need to convert it into meter per second by multiplying it by 5 by 18 so you will get this value as 12.5 okay 12.5 meter per second okay 12.5 meter per second but in this case the time is equal to distance upon speed again distance in this case will be the length of the platform okay the length of the train sorry the length of the train what the train covers while passing through this man train upon speed is 12.5 and this length of the train this t is not the time this is basically the train let me write it here also clearly this is platform plus this is train okay so platform plus train 375 equation one train from here you will get that train is equal to the length of the train basically this is given to you as 14 so this will come out to be 14 into 12.5 that will be 175 so already you have got the answer from here if you see the options but if you just need to check it out, put this value here, you will get the answer of the platform length as 200 meters. Okay, so that answer for this question is option D. Yes, everyone has given me the right answer for this question. I am very, very happy with all your preparation. That means your preparation is going really great. Okay, so all of you have given me the right answer. So if you have any problem in this question, any one of you, you can ask me because this is the question that is asked in the gate examination 2018. Only the same sort of questions will be asked. You don't have to worry about it at all. Okay. If you may feel that this is a very simple question, how this question can be asked, it is not like that because this is the actual question that we have taken from the recently concluded gate examination 2018. Yes, this is from the last year, Parihar boys, you are absolutely right. This I have written, mentioned gate 2018 from the mechanical branch. Now let us see what is the next question that we have in front of us. Okay, it says that Budhan, what is the name? The Budhan covers a distance of 19 kilometers in two hours. That is the total distance it covers in two hours by cycling one fourth of the time he cycles for one fourth of the time. That means he cycles for half an hour and the walking the rest. That means he walks 1.5 hours 
through this he walks of this distance okay the next day he cycles at the same speed as before means the next day what he do he cycles at the same speed as the previous day for half the time and walks the rest at the same speed again and covers 26 kilometers in 2 hours means second day also he covers 26 kilometers in 2 hours but this day he cycles for 1 hour and walks for 1 hour then he, it is asked the speed in kilometer per hour at which Budhan walks okay what are you asking Guntur Yashwant is asking actually train enters and back leaves means it is two times no just considering the total length of the train plus the length of the platform okay Pooja Bhatt is asking sir why length of platform is not considered in second case because we are not concerned about the <coughs> train crossing the platform in that case okay we are just concerned about the train crossing the man the man is also running on a platform and we are considered we are just concerned with the train crossing the man not the train crossing the platform okay that's all so now see this question very simple okay in the first case let us say day one what does he do in day one the total distance is cover he covers is a 19 kilometer and the total time he takes is two hours okay okay so we make an equation 19 is the total distance we know that distance is equal to speed into time but we cannot use the single formula here why because he is not traveling by a same means of transportation he first cycles and then he what we do then he walks okay so 19 that means the time cycle let us say the speed of cycle by which he cycles is c okay that i am not mentioning i am not mentioning that that part okay and c then he the time which he cycles in the first day is one fourth of the time the total time is two hours so one fourth will be half an hour okay plus walking he do for how much time he do the walking for three by two hours okay so this gives you an equation that is multiply this two here 38 that is c plus 3 w is equal to 38 this is your equation number one okay this is equation number one the second equation for the day two if we consider he to covers a total distance of 26 kilometers in two hours c that is one hour walking plus one hour cycling okay so if this gives you an equation c plus w is equal to 26 so this is equation 2 if you will solve this you will get the answer solve these two simultaneous equations you will get the answer c as 20 and w as 6 okay and it is asked the speed in kilometer per hour at which the Budan walks. He walks at a speed of 6 kilometer per hour. Okay. Is it right? Did you get that everyone? Very simple problem. Okay. Just using the kind of the concept of an average speed or somewhat like that. Okay. Because in that also we use <coughs> the concept of two speeds and two times. So just to clarify that uh, concept, I use this question. Otherwise, this question was really easy. Okay. And this question was asked in year 2017 in the civil engineering branch. Okay. I hope this question is clear. Okay. Everyone. Yes. Everyone is giving me the right answer. Pooja, Ganguly, Saswat Pradhan, Srikant, Sagar. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let us see the next problem. This problem is from the topic of, you can call it as time and work or you can call it the man and work, whatever, by whatever name you have, right? Sanjay Singh, what you want to ask, if you can just clarify me your uh, <clears throat> concern, doubt, then I can repeat. I cannot repeat the whole problem each and every time, okay? If you have any problem, then you can ask me, okay? You post your doubt, till then I am reading this question. Read this fourth question. 1200 men and 500 women can build a bridge in two weeks okay this is the combination 900 men and 250 women will take three weeks to build the same bridge okay how many men will be needed to build the bridge in one week there is a combination of men and women they are working on a project they are building a bridge these many men and these many women take two weeks these many men and these many women takes three weeks 
so it is asked that what is the time or what is the how many men will be required only men not women to build the bridge in one week okay please this is very simple problem this kind of problems you have been doing very frequently in your class 10th level this is nothing this is just a class 10th level mathematics okay just say that a man can build a bridge this bridge in x days okay let this is the let condition okay the women can build it in suppose y days single we are talking about the single men and single women so the men's one day walk will be how much men's or okay it is asked in weeks so let us take it in weeks only that will be convenient otherwise we have to multiply it by <coughs> we have to divide it by seven so do not, not doing that so one day work of men will be how much one by x for a single man we are talking about okay and one day women's work will be one by y so according to this first condition given that is 1200 men's one week work sorry this is week again here also okay this is weak. Don't get confused. This is weak. Okay. 1200 by X plus 500 by Y is 1 by 2 because they are taking 2 weeks to build the, the bridge. So how much of the portion of the work will be completed, completed or how much of the bridge will be made in 1 week? That will be 1 by 2. Half. Okay. This is equation 1. Simple. And from this you will can make the second equation that is 900 by X plus 250 by y will be 1 by 3 because now they are taking 3 weeks so in 1 week 1 by 3rd of the work will be completed okay solve this equations get the answer of x and y you will get the answer of x as 3600 and y as 300 3000 sorry 3600 and 3000 and it is asking and it is asking that how many men will be needed so this gives you that a man takes, a single man takes 3600 weeks or 3600 weeks to build that bridge. So if we increase the workers limit or workers number by 3600 times, then the build will be bridge, then the bridge will be built in one week. So the total number of men that will be required will be 3600 to build the bridge in one week. Okay. okay is this okay anyone any problem yes c is the right answer c is the right answer 3600 yes absolutely right absolutely right for everyone okay shall we move on to the next question any problem any problem no see this Question number five says that S, M, E and F Saurabh is asking here rate of both are constant or not. In which question you are saying Saurabh please can you tell me? Ashwin Shukla no, Vishal is saying in example 3, why you take 1 by 2? Akshay, you can go, Vishal, you can go to this video. From the starting, you can see that, you can understand. Okay. S, M, E and F are working in shifts in a team to finish a project. Okay, they are working in a team to finish this project. M works with twice the efficiency of others. That means, let us write simultaneously, that is the efficiency of m is twice the efficiency of twice the efficiency of others twice the efficiency of others webhavi srivastava is saying sir i didn't get it please i am saying whatever you are asking whatever you want to ask if you are having any kind of a problem in any question please tell me your concerned request that what you didn't get anyone this is for everyone this what i am saying this is for everyone just post your answers post your queries by giving me a concerned request that what are you what you didn't get what is the point or 
which point in the question or which point in the solution or which point in my explanation you didn't get because i cannot repeat each and every question every time for each for single of you okay i can uh, tell you the concepts which you have missed or which you didn't get but please it's my humble request to each one of you that please tell me your concern request that what you didn't get or what you didn't understand okay so now next this one efficiency of others okay but but there is one more condition that is attached to it it says that m works for half as many days as e work that means if e works for 2x days then m works only for x days that is also the condition okay s and m have 6 hour shifts in our day whereas e and f have 12 hour shifts these are the conditions that is given for all okay shubham lcm method can be used yes lcm method can be used in that last one question yes you some of you have given me the answer for this one also but i am not getting the correct answer as of now please look into your problem everyone okay you are giving me the option as a but this is the problem that uh, many of you might get this question that is asked in ec 2016 not correct okay please see this then it is asked what is the ratio of contribution of m to the contribution of e in the project okay first of all this is i have given that m works for x days then e works for 2x days so contribution of work will be for m if we talk m works for 6 days 6 hour shift okay we are just concerned with m and e okay we are not concerned with s and f here first of all this is clear you leave s and f aside okay m is equal to x is the number of days this is the number of hours per day shift and it works with the twice the efficiency of others so in this others e is also included okay this is saying about e s and f so e is also included in this so let us say its efficiency is 2e okay and for 2 let me write it in this way 2ef okay and for the e it works with an efficiency of 2x then it works 12 hours per day but its efficiency is EFF okay so we have to find out the ratio that is M by E so just use it X into 6 into efficiency divided by 2x into 2 here it is twice efficiency okay 2x into 12 into efficiency okay cut this x x this comes out to be 12 by 24 which is nothing but 1 ratio 2 yes 1 ratio 2 now all of you are giving me the right answer 1 ratio 2 okay money Ro roshan is saying sir please give the short intro for the class what do you want i am not getting money this is the second class in this section as I have already told you, the English class conducted yesterday. Okay, and now these are the classes of the numerical portions that are asked in the gate examination. Okay, X and 2X are the number of days for which E and M works. Okay, for which E and M works. M works for X days, then E works for 2X days because it is given that M works with twice of efficiency but for half of the days. It is given. Okay direct ratio is applicable yes that i have shown with the direct ratio only this you can directly also do okay how it is how e is 2x because it is said that m works with twice the efficiency but for half the number of days and these are the number of days that i have written i am not understanding why you all are getting confused shubham is this okay now ex this 2x and x are the number of days for which m and e works and these are the efficiencies that m works with twice efficiency then e or then anyone else okay so is this problem clear x is number of days yes x is number of days for which m works okay see this problem fast 
okay or let us move to the next problem is this problem clear to everyone yes see this now in the next problem this problem solve very carefully very very carefully first read it two machines m1 and m2 are able to execute any of the four jobs p q r s okay there are four jobs which are to be performed and there are two machines to perform these two jobs that is no ganesh in the last question the efficiency is not same for both the m works with twice the efficiency okay sai pawan moglipur is asking to give the topic and the formulas for separately but that is that is not going to help you at that, this point of time for sai pawan because this is the last time you don't have to mug up the formulas you have to understand you have to prepare yourself in co consistently in line with the type of questions that are being asked okay you cannot just uh, read the formulas and then practice the problem now that much time is not there for you okay the, the better will be to solve some problems okay to see the problems to solve the problems because the percentage and all those formulas profit and loss compound interest si ci time distance the formula you know because that is the kind of mathematics that you have been learning from the your childhood classes from 6 7 8 9 10th you have been reading all those kind of formula so there is no point of giving you a class on the formulas on speed time distance the formula on percentage the formula on profit and loss it would be better that if you take my suggestion if you take my humble request as a guidance for you all that try to solve the questions that have been asked okay because the questions are not difficult okay they do not use any high level formula or high a complicated formula they do not use they do not require those kind of formulas okay you just understand the concepts you just understand the what is the requirement of a question how to understand it and how to solve it okay sai pawan moglipuri we are not solving limited number of problems i am solving around 20 problems for you in each class i will have four classes 20 multiplied by 4 is the 80 number of questions and 80 number of questions are a very good amount of questions that will help you in getting because if you say of this gate examination 15 marks ga portion around 9 to 10 marks will be of this numerical part only numerical and the reasoning part okay so of those 9 and 10 marks even if you get around 7 8 marks that is more than enough okay because 7 8 marks are more than enough and 7 Seven to eight marks you can easily get if you watch all these sessions. What I am conducting, okay? Uh, you just try to be with the, just go with the flow of the class, understand the concept, solve the problems, and then you can get seven to eight marks of those nine and ten that are asked in the gate examination. Okay. Harshit Shrivastav is saying, please revise the technical part, mechanical in short. Harshit. we are uh, <clears throat> we are not in a position now to conduct that kind of a session for the mechanical or for any other branch specific in this short point of time because there are only four five sessions that are planned for all of you of this ga portion because that portion we haven't touched for the means quite a long time but if you want the revision of mechanical or any other subject that is available on the app okay that is available on the app we have provided you the video courses for mechanical civil and cs okay you can go to the grade up classroom for any section for any topic any subject if you want you can go watch the video ask your queries there on the app also we have we had the plan the champion study plan the notes the topics the quizzes are already there the mock test was there okay the test series is already live you can go there solve as many problems if you have any problem you can ask okay but providing you a separate revision course at this point of time is not feasible okay i hope you understand this and money roshan you are saying that you join delay there is not a not a issue you can go after this video gets over you can go there and solve this and you can see this whole video again and then you can get your concepts right okay till now don't worry about the past 6 4 5 questions that we have completed because we will we taking around 20 questions in this section okay so just go with the flow of the class understand okay so abhishek kumar is asking please tell me the important topic for gate 
see abhishek these are the questions that i am solving here by solving these questions you will already come to know that what are the important topics that are going to cover okay see this okay the machine scan performs one job on one object at a time job p q r and s take 30 minutes 20 minutes 60 minutes and 15 minutes each respectively there are 10 objects each requiring exactly one job there are 10 objects which require exactly one job there are four jobs okay job p is to be performed on two objects q is to be performed on three objects r is to be performed on one object and s to be performed on four objects then what is the minimum time needed to complete all the jobs this is the question this is the question okay see see this okay so so for p let us take it job by job we are taking it one by one job so let us take for p job p job take 30 minutes time okay and job p has to be performed on two objects so the total time for which this job p will be done that will be 60 minutes okay for q the time will is 20 minutes and the number of jobs that require three the number of objects which require job three is three okay on job q is three so that is 20 into three is 60 minutes again okay for r the time duration is 20 uh, time duration is 60 minutes 60 minutes and job r is required only on one object so into one so that gives you 60 minutes for s the time is 15 minutes and the number of jobs which number of objects which require job s is 4 so 15 into 4 will give you again 60 minutes so if you see this is basically a general kind of a question that cannot be clubbed into any topic specific okay so if you say on any machine m1 and any machine m2 the minimum time that requires will be how much 60 minutes plus 60 minutes that is two hours okay so you can make any combination i am just telling you a one combination that you can use m1 and p and q can be done on m1 and r and r and s job can be done on m2 okay so two hours is the minimum time that is needed to complete all the jobs because before two hours this job will not be done okay this is question is clear everyone has given me the right answer for this one okay now see let us see the next problem that is problem number seven this is the question from percentage okay this is the problem for from percentage topic see this in a huge pile of apples and oranges there is a huge pile of apple and oranges they are both of the ripe and unripe category and they are mixed together okay of this huge pile 15 percent are unripe okay and of the unripe fruits 45 percent are apples okay of the ripe ones 66 percent are oranges so if the pile contains a total of five six nine two triple zero fruits these are the total number of fruits that are present total okay in a huge pile then how many of them are apples okay Sai Kumar is asking why only two combinations are considered. Sai, I told you that this is just the combination that I am telling you. That is M, P and Q can be used on M1 and R and S can be used on R and S, R and S can be used on M2. There can be many such combinations but the minimum time required will be two hours only. Okay. So now read this one. See, the total number, if you see here, the total number. And one more request to every one of you whenever you are answering me any question what you do you just write the question number in front of it and then give me the answer okay if you are answering for this question now seven just give me the answer as seven then you can reply with a b c or d whatever your answer is okay because that will help me understand that for which question you are replying because this way if you just write a b c d i, am, I do not get that for which question you are replying to okay see this total number of fruits is five six nine two triple zero okay this is a huge value so do not miss out any values or any digits of this okay 
then there are both ripe and unripe so 15% are unripe if you say me 15% are unripe that means 0.15 into this whole value will come here you will get the answer as 853800 okay and the remaining are ripe they are how many 4838200 okay simple then of this unripe of this unripe 45% are apples so if you take this unripe and you multiply it by 0.45 you will get the number of apples that are unripe so how many are those they are 384210 384210 these are the number of these are the number of apples that are of unripe category okay i will write it in this form unripe apples okay unripe apples they are then from the ripe ones what are the total ripe these are the total ripe and out of this 66% are oranges do not get confused 66% are oranges that means the remaining 34% that is multiplied this value by 0.34 and get the answer as the number of ripe oranges ripe apples sorry ripe apples they are that answer you will get as 16449888 okay so these are unripe apples these are ripe apples add them get the answer as 2929198 so the answer correct for this question is option a okay still some of you are giving me the answer without mentioning the question okay that is not good please give me the answer by writing the question number in front of it okay for this question i don't think that any of you have any kind of a problem okay is it easy or is it tough how how everyone of you are feeling while attending this class these kind of the questions are all uh, are the questions that are usually asked in the gate examination the level of the aptitude portion is not tough okay you just have to recall you have to rewind all the concepts the formulas and all things that you have learned till class 10th this is just the basics okay so tell me how are you feeling now that can you give me can you solve these kind of questions in the real examination or not okay did you get some kind of confidence because this is the portion which is neglected i must tell you that these 15 marks are neglected by most of the aspirants but these 15 marks are really really beneficial for you for getting that hike in the rank because when you when you get around 70 marks in an gate examination for any of the branch okay if you get 70 marks 50 marks 60 marks that kind of a marks can be attained easily by going through only the technical portion and the maths portion this 50 60 70 i am telling for different branches considering that level of the examinations for each and every branch okay but increasing those 50 to 55 60 to 65 or 70 to 75 or 70 to 80 that requires that extra effort okay and that extra effort is that that is the only effort or that is the increase on the marks that is from 70 to 80 or 65 to 75 that is the marks that requires a lot of effort or basically the kind of effort which decides your career or which decides your future aspirations that whether you want to be in an iit or whether you want to go for any psu jobs so that is the marks that is the range of marks that will help you achieve those that rank so that you can get a call from the psu or you can get an admission into iit so for that uh, <clears throat> so for that uh, these for those 15 marks or for the 10 marks this ga portion is very important okay that's why we have planned these classes it was not like that that we were uh, <clears throat> now uh, getting over with the technical classes and just for the time filling of these one week that we have introduced and we are consuming your time also and we are giving our time also in this this these kind of sessions okay do not feel that share this video with all your friends all your colleagues also who are preparing for any branches of the gate examination come in this session join it for those each and every marks which you will gain in that gate examination which is lined up for the next week in the next to next week that will really really be helpful okay that's fine that 
that uh, five to ten marks will give you an extra edge over the other aspirant so do not hesitate in sharing this video in liking the uh, liking these videos and subscribing to our channel so that you can get more and more such video in <clears throat> short time before the examination that will be helpful for your crisp revision okay so Hitesh from time and work the question we have done okay so now moving on to the next question I have given you some basic knowledge or some basic understanding okay so now move on to the next problem see this this is again from the kind of a percentage problem okay a person this is the question that is asked in EC 2016 okay so EC 2016 okay a person moving through our tuberculosis zone prone zone has 50% probability of becoming infected okay however only 30% of the infected people develop the disease okay means who am are going passing through that zone it is that 50% are probable of becoming infected but of those 50% only only 30% develop the disease okay first read the question understand the language of the question what it is asking then only try to solve it okay then it is asked what percentage of people moving through our tuberculosis prone zone remains infected but does not show the symptoms of the disease okay so see if there are total 100 people just solve it by this way if there are total 100 people they are moving through this zone 50 percent will get infected okay 50 percent will get infected and 50 percent will not get infected they will not get infected okay this we have made from the this statement the 50 percent probability of becoming infected now of those however only 30 percent of the infected people so now we move on to this category 50 percent 30 percent develop the disease whereas 70 percent do not develop that disease okay so now it is saying that what percentage of people moving through the tuberculosis prone zone remains infected means they are into this category remains infected but does not show symptoms of disease that means in those the system the symptoms of disease has not developed so what will be that that is nothing but the 70 percent of 50 percent of 100 okay so what is that 70 basically 0 0.7 into 0 0.5 into 30 and that will give you as 35 so the percentage of the people who pass through this tuberculosis prone zone they become infected but the disease does not develop in them that is only 35 percent so the correct answer for this one is option c yes many of you are giving me the answer and many of you are giving me the right answer also okay so i am very happy for the persons who are getting the right answer it's absolutely good that you are understanding the question c now this question did not will not take you even half a minute or one minute in solving okay but if this question comes for two marks in the gate examination then you can achieve those two marks in less than a minute's time whereas solving a technical problem of the same weightage of two marks will take you around three four five minutes okay so that's why I am saying that you are getting these 8 to 10 marks of this section for free in the gate examination. You can go there, you can see the questions and believe me out of those 9 to 10 marks, 7 to 8 marks can be achieved really easily. Okay, you just need to solve these questions. You just come here, watch our sessions, solve these many problems only. They are also enough. You don't have to go. Uh, <clears throat> offline medium offline sources offline classes pick up any book practice nothing okay just watch these sessions understand the types of problems that i am doing here for you okay so and you will get around seven to eight marks easily in the examination and that seven to eight marks will only create a huge difference between you and other okay so now see the next problem the problem number nine this is from the topic of profit and loss read the problem read the problem a fruit seller sold a basket of fruits at 12.5 percent loss 
okay he sold it for 10.5 percent loss then had he sold sold it for 100 100 rupees more he would have made a 10 percent gain what is the loss in rupees incurred by the fruit seller this is the question Shrikant is asking sir try to include permutation and combinations problem Shrikant they are coming they are coming your way after some problems the permutation combinations problems are also there probability questions are also there please hold on okay Himanshu is saying questions jaldi do sir see the Himanshu the question is in front of you I will not waste much of your time okay see if you consider the CP Harshit is asking by grade up only can a student get 80 marks yes a student can get 80 marks surely Harshit just have a belief upon yourself and upon the contents that we are providing you you can surely get good marks okay see CP in this case if you consider as X the loss has been given to you as 12.5 percent that means that means these are rupees okay these are rupees so what will be the SP in that case you know that SP is CP minus loss simple you don't have to remember any trick and nothing of that sort okay just solve the problem CP is X minus loss is 12.5 percent just remember one thing that is the loss percent or the gain percent is calculated taking the basis as cost price not the selling price don't do that mistake okay the loss percent and the profit percent are calculated considering the CP or the cost price as the base value okay so this will be minus that is 0 0.125 0 0.125 x so this will come out to be 0 0.875 x simple now the new SP is 8108 more than this so the new SP will be equal to 0 0.875 x plus 108 okay and he would have made a gain of 10 percent on this only on this only okay so the new gain is if you say the gain in this case is 10 percent so the new SP from this side will be equal to how much x plus gain that is x plus 0.1 x which is equal to 1.1 x this is also new SP this is also new SP just equate get the value of x so 1.1 x equal to 0.875 x plus 108 from here you can get the value of x as 4 480 you can get the value of x as rupees 480 the loss is 12.5 percent 12.5 percent is nothing but 1 by 8 of any value okay because 12.5 divided by 100 you will get 8 then multiply it by 480 get the answer as 60 so the correct answer for this one is option c Sanika Kale is saying, I generally get panic and examine and forget many concepts. Sir. For that, you have to be really calm and composed. Okay. Just do not uh, get carried away with the question paper. Okay. Even if you do not get some questions right at the first point of time, you do not have to get that much worried. Okay. Because there is a lot of time that is being in the examination that usually happens with the candidates that while preparing, they are all right. But when they go to the examination hall, they by seeing the question paper they get panic okay that should not happen that is basically a simple uh, advice to each one of you that when you go to the examination hall just be calm and composed do not get carried away with the level of the questions okay some questions may be uh, difficult you are not getting to solve them at first okay so Ashwin Sukla is calculating how you calculated new SP see in this new SP new SP is said in the first case the new SP is the old SP plus 108 okay and here it is said that the gain of 10 percent in the second case the gain of 10 percent this is this one only that is x is the CP plus gain percentage or gain percentage nothing but 0.1 x so 1.1 x okay everyone of you have given me the right answer that is 60 so without wasting much time let us move on to the next problem see the question number 10 it says that Leela aspires to buy a car worth rupees 10 lakh after 5 years. Okay. After 5 years. Then what is the a minimum amount in rupees that she should deposit now in a bank which offers 10% annual rate of interest. Interest was compounded annually. 
This is the problem for the compound interest. Okay. Sanjay Singh is asked saying that, uh, sir, clear nahi aara video. There might be some problem with your uh, internet connection. Purna Chandrao, how can we improve to stay concentrated continuously for three hours? That will basically not happen overnight. You have to uh, work hard for long period of time. When you are studying, try to study for three hours continuously at your home also. Okay, wherever you are preparing, if you are uh, solving some of the mocks, whatever, then you have to sit, you have to practice for sitting three hours continuously. Okay, then only, uh, <clears throat> then only those uh, habit, that habit of sitting or getting concentration, uh, your full concentration for three hours will develop. Okay, that will not happen overnight. Okay, probability coming, probability questions coming. So this is the compound question of compound interest. So it, the simple formula of compound interest say that A is equal to P1 plus R by 100 to the power of N. Okay, so Leela aspires to buy a car worth rupees 10 lakh. That means at the after 10 years, she requires amount that is equal to 10 lakh. Okay, the time is 5 years. This N is equal to 5. The percent, the rate at which she is getting the interest from the bank, that is 10%. Okay, just put all these value and get the answer of P. That is only required. In this case, you will get the answer of P as 6209219 okay which is approximately equal to this value so the correct answer for this is b this class is for gate examination vicky kumar because this uh, or if that can be used for esa also because some kind of questions are because uh, from the 2017 that new portion has been added okay so some questions are asked in that also so that also can be used okay Previous air question enough for gate. Yes, previous air question of this section of the general aptitude portion are absolutely enough. I am saying in this uh, class of uh, four classes of the numerical part and the reasoning part, I will be covering around 75 to 80 questions and they will all be surely enough. Okay. This is a very simple problem in compound interest. Let us see the next problem. See this. In a party, in a party, 60% of the invited guests are male and 40% are female. Okay, 60% are male and 40% are female. If 80% of the invited guests attended the party, calculators are, are uh, allowed. Yes, Ashwin Sukla calculators are allowed, but that is an hand that is not an handheld computers which you have been using uh, till now in your uh, school uh, college level. That is the virtual calculator that is present on the screen only. Okay, see this. If 80% of the invited guests attend the party and if all the invited female guests attended, what would be the ratio of males to females among the attendees in the party? Okay, see, if total, see this, if total 100 are the total who have been invited, total invitees, okay, or total invited guests you can write, these are 100. Okay, of these 60 are male, 60 male have been invited and 40 female have been invited. Okay, 40 female have been invited. So, but what happened of those 100, all 100 did not attend the party. Okay, only 80% were the attendees. Okay, 80% were the attendees or who attended the party. Okay, attendees. So, of those what happened 80% means of 100 the 80% becomes equal to 80 only okay so of those 80 it says that all the invited female guests attended so the invited female guests were 40 so they were 40 and the remaining 40 of those 80 will be the male so this is female this is male so what is the what would be the ratio of males to females among the attendees in the party okay so these are the number of males attending the party. These are the number of females attending the party. So ratio becomes 40, ratio 40 or simply 1 ratio 1. So the correct answer for this one is question number, option number B. Okay. So that is the question asked in CS 2018. Okay. See, these are the kind of problems that are actually asked in the gate examination. That is not any kind of tough. 11 question option is B. Okay. Option is B. Yes. 
option is B. Right, absolutely right. All have been given me the right answer. Okay. Now let us move on to the next problem. Problem number 12. Now this is the problem of probability. Now you have to solve this problem. This is the problem of probability. Shekel O'Neill can successfully make 60 free throws out of 100 attempts on an average. Okay. What is the probability that he will successfully make exactly 6 free throws in 10 attempts? Yes, that question is over. 1.1 is 1 ratio 1 is the right answer for that one. Absolutely right. Okay. Now move on to this problem. This problem is from the topic of probability. But there is one distribution that uh, will be used in this one. What will be that? What will be that distribution? You have to name it. Okay. First of all, the number of attempts that are required here is 10. That is N is equal to 10. Okay. R is the number of success or the number of success which you require. That he requires 6, exactly 6 free throws out of 10 attempts. Okay. Okay. That is there. Then, the probability that he do that successfully is 60 out of 100. That means it is 0.6 and Q will be equal to 1 minus P that is unsuccessful attempt that will be 0.4. Okay. Okay. Then simply what you have to find out, you have to find out the probability that he will successfully make exactly 6 free throws in 10 attempts. The simple formula for this is NCR p to the power r q to the power n minus r simple okay do it get the answer okay so n is number of total attempts that is six yes 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 80 per questions are enough arun yes yes this is a question from binomial distribution so 10 c6 P is 0.6 to the power of 6 and 0.4 to the power of 0.4 of 4 sorry n minus r this is n this is r so this will be 4 so just solve this get the answer the answer is 0.2508 so the correct answer for this is option a 12th is a yes absolutely right all of you are giving me the right answer if you know this formula of the binomial distribution, then this question is really, really easy for every one of you. Okay. This is the problem that Shubham, what does not understand? What did you, what do you not, what did you not get? See, these are the total number of attempts that has, he has to make. And these are the exact number of attempts for which he require success. Okay. For which he requires success. These are the probab this is the probability of his success because he can make 60 free throws out of 100 attempts. That means his probability of success is 0.6 and his probability of not success or probability of failure is this. Okay. And this is the formula for getting P success in R attempts when the total number of attempts are N. Okay. So this is the basic formula that we use for the question. Okay. For the, these type of questions using the binomial explanation, binomial distribution. Okay. Now it's clear to everyone. Okay. So for this, you get the answer as A. Now moving on to the next question. This question is a dice problem. This is again the question on probability. Read this question. Two dice are thrown simultaneously. Okay. That means, okay. There are two dice. They are shown, shown uh, they are thrown simultaneously. The probability that the product of the numbers appearing on the top faces of the dice is a perfect square. Sir, there is no significance of 60 free throws out of 100. There is significance. From that only you have to find out the value of P and Q. Okay. Vishnu YS and Deepak Chauhan, you are asking the same doubt that how to know that this is a question of binomial distribution. That can be that you will come to know by solving the problems by looking at the problems by solving the as many as problems and these are the type of problems if you solve them then you can come to know that these are the questions that which concept have to be used okay 
see first of all on two dice when you throw simultaneously you will get two results okay so the total number of outcomes total outcomes are 36 okay like 1 1 1 2 and so on up to 6 6 they are the total number of outcomes that is 36 but but Devajit Pal, but we take P and Q from 6 out of 10. That is the <coughs> coincidence that both of these values are getting the values as 0.6 only. But uh, that is not the correct way of doing it. Okay, that 60 out of 100 will, will give you the value of P and Q. Okay, so in this case, the total number of outcomes are 36. But the favorable outcomes will be that the product of the numbers that are appearing on top is a perfect square. What are the perfect squares? First of all, that we can get that is 1, 4, 9, 16 and 25. Okay. 1, 4, 9, 16 and 25. Now, how to get 1? The product. Remember, this is we are talking about the number of products that are appearing on that dice. Okay. So, the favorable outcomes if we talk about they are 1, 1. Okay any other in one will not give you <clears throat> other than this one one four one four and one one because this product will give you one this product will give you four others will not give then in the case of two if you multiply two by two then you will get four okay then no other in two will get you that three and three that is three into three is nine okay then four and four any other no five and five okay and one more here also that is 36 Yes, 36 also. Yes, Purnachandra 36 also. Yes, 36 is there. Yes, I have written 36 also. Yes, and 6 and 6. Anything else is there? No. So, how many number of total favorable outcomes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And one more is there. That is left here. What is that? 4, 1 is also there. Like 1, 4, 4, 1 is also there. So, they are total 8. So, favorable outcomes are 8. Total outcomes are 36. Probability is 8 by 36. Cancel it out, get it 2 by 9. Correct answer, option B, 2 by 9. Yes, 36 is also there. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 1, 4, 4, 1. Absolutely correct. Every one of you are absolutely correct. Yes, the answer for this one is 2 by 9. Very simple problem, probability asked in civil engineering 2017. Now move on to the next problem. Question number 14. Read this. Read this problem. Question number 14. What does this say? 10% of the population in a town are HIV positive. This is the actual value that is given that 10% of the population in a town are HIV positive. A new diagnostic kit for HIV detection is available. This kit correctly identifies HIV plus or HIV positive individuals 95% of the time and, and HIV negative individuals 89% of the time. Okay. A particular patient is tested using this kit and is found to be positive. Okay. The probability that the individual is actually positive is how to get total 36. See 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4 and so on. If you will move on, you will get in there two dice, 6 and 6. That, that way 6 for each case is starting from 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3 and you will get 36. Okay, Ashwin. See, now read this question. 10% of the people are <clears throat> actually, if you talk about the actual data, that the persons who are actually HIV positive are 0.1. That is 10%. Okay, and the remaining are actual HIV negative. Okay, that is 0.9 or 90%. Okay, now if it is asked that the probability that the individual is actually positive, okay, from that uh, from that kit it is tested and is found to be positive, but what is the proof or what is the probability that the individual is actually positive? So that means there are two cases. One is that he is actually HIV positive and the machine identifies correct. One is that case. Second case is he is actually HIV negative, but machine identifies him wrong. That is basically the total outcomes. Okay, the total outcomes is 
that he is actual positive. Okay, he is actual HIV positive and machine identifies him correct. That is 0.95 of this. And he is actually HIV negative, but the machine identifies him wrong. For the HIV negative cases, the, HIV, the machine or the kit identifies 89% as the correct cases. But we are saying that 89% is correct. That means he should be HIV negative, but machine identifies him wrong. That means 0.11 times. And these two will add because these are the total number of events or both of these are the mutually exhaustive events. Okay, independent events and mutually exhaustive. So they will add up and they will give you the total number of outcomes. What is the favorable number of outcomes? The favorable number of outcomes is that he is actually HIV positive and the machine also identifies him correct. That is this one. Okay, so the probability will come 0.1 into 0.95 upon 0.1 into 0.95. This total one, this total one. Okay, this plus this plus 0.9 into 0.11 okay so solving this you will get the answer as 95 upon 194 which is somewhat around 0.4897 approximated to 0.49 okay so the answer for this one is 0.49 yes you can use the base theorem also that's absolutely correct Pawan uh, Pawan, Siva, Sai Kumar, absolutely correct. You can use the base theorem also, but I am not using it base theorem. Okay. Why it is 0.11, not 0.89? Why? It is 0.11 because we are considering the cases for which the person is positive, detected positive, because it is saying that the person is found to be detected positive. How it can be detected positive? When he is actually HIV negative, but the machine gives the wrong result. In this case, when the person is HIV negative, the machine gives 89% as the right result, is the right result. But we are not considering with the right result because it is saying that he is found positive. So what, how he can be found positive? There are two ways by only by which he can be found positive through that machine. When he is actually positive, machine gives you correct. When he is actually negative, but the machine gives you wrong then only in those two cases he can be identified as positive and this is the condition that it is given that he is found positive so that's why these two cases arises total number of okay okay sample space aman kumar clear i told you that how is it 0 0.95 0 0.95 is given 95 percent this way only okay now moving on to the next problem Four cards are randomly selected. This is again a problem of probability. Very simple. Please give me answer for this one. 14. Meenakshi, what is the problem? Positive in both cases. That is the Nitu Singh. That is only I, or I have uh, uh, used that pro positive in both cases. Because positive in both cases, in the negative means when he is not actually HIV positive but he is detected wrong then only in the case he will be given as positive okay give me that anyone have, have you having any problem 0 0.95 0 0.95 is 95 percent that the he is actually positive and the machine gives him correct result that is 95 percent or 0 0.95 okay now read this first question four cards are randomly selected from a pack of 52 cards okay if the first two cards are kings. What is the probability that the third card is a king? There are total 52 cards. Okay. Out of those, two are kings that are already excluded. Okay. Two are kings. Then the probability that the third card is a king. Now after removal of these cards, the total number of cards left are four. Sorry, 50. And the kings remaining are, the kings remaining are how much? Two kings because there are total how many kings in a deck of 52 cards there are four kings okay if you know the suits that is heart club diamond and the fourth suit okay of all those four suits there are four kings okay
so two cards have already been re removed so remaining are only two kings so out of those 50 what is the probability of getting the third card as a king will be 2c1 upon 50c1 so that is 2 by 50 the correct answer is option b spade yes spade sorry i forgot that yes spade heart king diamond and spade heart sorry heart diamond club and spade yes yes absolutely right spade is absolutely right okay move on to the next problem this is very simple yes spade yes 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 i got it i got it okay this is very simple problem no need to waste much time on this some more important questions are there okay now see this question this is the question from probability again a class of 12 children has two more boys than girls please read please read specifically these questions please read the specific statements of these okay this question it is very important a group of three children are randomly picked up from this class to accompany the teacher on a field trip okay what is the probability that the group accompanying the teacher contains more girls than boys first of all there are total 12 children out of these it says that the there are two more boys than girls that means there are seven boys plus five girls so this first condition satisfied total 12 that is also satisfied now it says three children have to be randomly picked up from this group okay to accompany the teacher on a field trip then what is the probability that the group accompanying the teacher contains more girls than boys so there are two cases that can come from this that is two girls plus one boy or three girls plus zero boys okay so how you will find out this how you will find out this the total number of events or the outcomes is 12 c3 because from among the group of 12 you have to find out three so 12 c3 but the favorable one is either it will be this one or either it will be this one so these are two independent and mutually exhaustive events so their probability will add up okay so selecting two girls out of five will give you five c2 into into selecting one boy from seven will give you seven c1 plus three girls from five that is five c3 into zero boys from seven is seven c0 okay divided by total number of outcomes that is 12 c3 5 c2 is 10 7 c1 is 7 plus 5 into 3 is 10 this is 1 a 1 this is comes out to be 220 so this is 80 by 220 in this case okay this comes out to be 4 by 11 which is somewhat around 0 0.3636 okay so the option in this case is given in option d there is some ambiguity in this question okay there is some ambiguity in this question <clears throat> because the marks given for this question is marks to all for this question ashwin is asking how to solve 12 c3 see you should remember this formula n c r is equal to n factorial upon n factorial n minus sorry n factorial upon r factorial n minus r factorial and npr that is used for the arrangements that is n factorial upon n minus r factorial okay you should remember these formulas <clears throat> because you won't be able to solve it through calculator that virtual calculator i suppose so you should know these formulas and then try to simplify and get the answer okay okay is it done <clears throat> understood by everyone three four more questions are left five c three <clears throat> read the next question now see this is very important question please all of you focus full attention to this question now this is very important question read it and try to solve it <clears throat> how to add both cases sir both cases will come numerical value you can add up simply okay because they are the mutually exclusive event because either the group will 
either the group will contain two girls one boy or three girls and no boys fulfilling that condition of more number of girls than the boys okay read this question now the probability is that a student paths in mathematics physics and chemistry are m p and c respectively okay for maths it is m for physics it is saying p and for chemistry it is saying as c okay of these subjects the student has 75% chance of passing in at least one okay <clears throat> multiplication is done for those events which are not <clears throat> mutually exhaustive okay means one event will occur then second event will occur they are independent events they are independent events which do not <clears throat> means one the occurrence of one event will not influence the occurrence of other that is the mutual that is the independent events and there we use multiply and addition when there are two mutually exhaustive events that means when one event will happen it will rule out the happening of the other another event in that case in that case we use the addition okay so read this passing in at least one chance is a 75% Passing in at least two is fifty percent, and forty percent chances passing in exactly two. Okay, so the following relations are drawn in MPC. That is P plus M plus C equal to this. P plus M plus C equal to this, and this. Now you have to find out. You have to give me the relation. You have to give me the answer that which of these relations are correct. See, Shubham. For this virtual calculator, we have made a separate video that is provided or that is available on the YouTube channel of GradeUp. Okay, that's GradeUp Gate channel. It is already there. You can go and watch this video. Okay, we have made an exhaustive video for that. Okay, so find out this answer. First of all, give me that answer. Okay, do not uh, guess this. This is not that easy. It it might look a bit easy to all of you, but this question is not that easy. Please focus upon this. Okay. we will take one by one all the three conditions of at least one at least two and exactly two and then we will solve it okay okay see this at least one means that either he is passed in one subject or two subject or he may be passed in three subject okay because it is talking about a single student a student okay either he is passed in one either he is passed in two or either he is passed in all the three subject that is the meaning of at least one so at least one can be found out one minus he is not passed not passed in any subject not passed in any subject because if he is passed in any of the one subject also that will fulfill this condition at least one so we are uh, subtracting this value from one that means it is we will get this one that 75% chance passing in at least one okay and this will be 0.75 but what will be that see one minus he is passed in mathematics means one so he is not passed in mathematics is one minus m okay then multiplying one minus p not passed in physics not passed in chemistry that is 0.75 this is equation number 1 okay okay did you get that okay then second case is passing in at least two at least two means that either he is passed in physics chemistry chemistry maths or maths chemistry that combination you have to make pass in maths pass in physics but not passed in chemistry okay that means we will write it simply like this wait m p 1 minus c plus m c 1 minus p plus p c 1 minus m that is passed in exactly two subject oh sorry at least two is saying so he can be passed in all the three subjects also this way this is 0.5 this is equation number 2 okay and the third one is passing in exactly two exactly two means he is passed in maths physics but not in chemistry plus passed in physics chemistry not in maths plus he is passed in maths and chemistry but not in physics this is 0.4 okay this is equation number 3 from here only simply using this second and third equation you can if you subtract this equation number 3 from 2 you will get the value of mpc as 0.1 that means your this option is correct that means third is correct so one goes off two goes off okay third is correct absolutely correct this means that your answer is either this or this for this you have to simplify these equations 1 2 and 3 and get the answer you will get 
exactly you will get the answer as p plus m plus c equal to 27 by 20 okay there's a time constraint though this class have gone a bit longer than the usual classes that we used to take okay but uh, if that there would have been time i would have solved you this question step by step and shown you that how you arrived at this answer p plus m plus c equal to this so the correct answer for this question is option number d okay any problem but by the Wayne diagram you won't be able to find out these kind of relations because we have to find out these relations that's why we are using is this one okay you can try it with Wayne diagram also i have tried it with this one because by finding out the Wayne diagram you won't be able to get these kind of values okay next question number 18 see this is again a very important or very good problem i should say see this question number 18 there are two sets given that set A contains these values 2, 3, 4, 5, set B contains 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, then two numbers are randomly selected, okay, okay, two, two numbers are randomly selected, one from each set, one from each set, okay, then what is the probability that the sum of the two numbers is equal to 16, okay, see, the favorable outcomes or the total number of outcomes will be equal to what the total number of outcomes will be four means selecting one number from here selecting one number from here that is 4 c1 into 5 c1 that is 4 into 5 simply 20 okay this is the total number of out <clears throat> this is the total number of outcomes then favorable outcome is that the sum of the two number is 16 so the favorable is either you get 2 plus 14 or you get 3 plus 13 or you get 4 and 12 or you get 11 and 5 so the favorable outcomes are these four total is 20 answer is 4 by 20 1 by 5.2 option a correct yes option a absolutely correct moving on to the next problem this is again a very important and good question i should say this was the question asked in mechanical 2017 see this question there are four women pqrs and five men v w x y z in a group okay we are required to form pairs each consisting of one woman and one man okay p is not to be paired with z this is the condition that has given that p is not to be paired with z and y must necessarily be paired with someone that is the condition that y must be there in a group and p is not to be paired with z then in how many ways can four such pairs be paired okay we are given the condition that y must necessarily be paired with someone so we will take that condition only that is p paired with y we will take them one by one see p paired with y okay that means now you are left here with three cases that is q r and s and they can be paired with any of these fours okay so q can be paired with four okay r can be paired with any three and s can be paired with two so the total number of outcomes from here you get is four into three twelve into two is twenty four okay first case first case second case p paired with sorry q paired with y or p y paired with q you can say okay now p can be paired with how many because when q is paired with y p can be paired with only v w and x it cannot be paired with z because this condition is violated against okay okay p is not paired with z so p is paired with three v w and x q is paired with y r can be paired with another 3 and s can be paired with 2 so the total number of outcomes from here is 18 okay next third case is r with r is paired with y then p can again be paired with 3 because r paired with y then p cannot again cannot be paired with z because of this condition okay remember this one so p paired with 3 q with 3 s with 2 okay remaining 2 so this again gives you 18 now last one is s paired with y s paired with y p can again be paired with 3 and 
again q with 3 and r with 2 again 18 so the total number of ways by which these four pairs can be formed is 24 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18 that is 54 plus 24 that is 78 so the correct option for this is 78 sir is that video is uploaded after that session yes this video is available after the session you can watch it on youtube okay yes now see this problem this is a easy problem but just we have to follow these conditions okay see the second last problem the second last problem of this session how many four digit numbers can be formed with the 10 digits 0 to 9 are 10 digits with no number can start with 0 and if repetitions are not allowed okay 1 2 3 4 these are the four digits where we have to use them okay because we have to make a four digit number so in the first digit we cannot use 0 so we are left with 1 to 9 there are nine options that can be used here okay in the second digit we can use nine digits again because suppose in the first digit we use one so this one is gone because it says without repetition repetition not allowed okay so one will not be there but this zero can be included so zero and two to nine these are eight digits this is one more digit that is nine then in this place the remaining eight because out of ten two we have used here and 8 here and 7 here so this will give you 81 into 56 this will give you the answer as 4 5 3 6 these are the total number of ways by which this can be written yes 10 9 8 7 not 10 9 8 7 it is 9 9 8 7 yes 9 9 8 7 9 in first 9 in second 8 in third and 7 in fourth 20th answer is c yes okay now the last problem of this session an email password an email password must contain three characters okay there are three characters that can be used for an email password the password has to contain one numeral from 0 to 9 there should be one numeral one uppercase that is the capital letters and one the lowercase character from the english alphabet okay how many distinct passwords are possible okay how many distinct passwords are possible okay three digits first of all three digits or three characters so in the first place we can use these how many digits are these these are 10 digits that is 0 to 9 so there is 10 digits that is these are the digits from 0 to 9 okay in the first this place we can use suppose how many 26 that is these are the capital numerals okay or the uppercase numeral that is a to z and this in this also we can use 26 that is a small a to z so how many are these 56 into 26 into 26 into 10 that is 7 7 7 6 7 6 0 these are the total number of ways which in which these can be selected but but see one more thing see one more thing a is not the answer please hold on because it says how many distinct passwords are possible see if we use such kind of a password like one a a these are the three digits but these three digits can be shuffled also one is this also a a one is also there okay a a one is also there so such kind of arrangements are also possible so to these many digits or these many or these digits we have to make an arrangement also this was the selection what we did but we have to make an arrangement and three digits in three places can be arranged by three factorial ways okay so your answer will be six seven six zero into three factorial is nothing but three into two that is four zero five six zero okay so the correct answer for this one is option c yes okay so that's all that i have for you for this session okay tomorrow i will also come from uh, at the same time at 6 30 we will have some more numerical problem numerical computations for you okay so thank you and uh, <clears throat> that tomorrow